So, back and roll up doors. Uh, so this is a pretty standard, like small or medium sized door. Um, as you can tell, when you from a distance, it looks like it's locked, right? Um, but if you know what you're looking for, you only see one tab of metal. As we're walking up on the door, we're going to be looking and seeing if there's a second tab in there. That's going to be your locking pin. Zero so four lines avenue, just about back nineteen. Like Five hundred four sixty nine, eighty four lines avenue. Push it up. It's not locked. Like we discussed, the fastest way to get into any of these doors is just to open them up the way they were designed to be opened. So always check for that pin. Our initial go-to options on this. What we can do, we can either cut pins, we can cut locks, or we can cut the track. Um, if we're gonna go ahead and cut the lock, with a lock like this, you may have a difficult time actually getting it. If you were thinking about going across the top here, you've got, you've got metal that you have to cut through with, the, um, with this enclosure, the surround here. So actually doing a plunge cut through this, you're cutting a bunch of different sections of metal at a time. And what can happen, especially with this kind of lock here, this sort of like a puck shaped one, um, this, you can cut through this whole top section and this will still retain the pin. So it can be difficult to actually get all of that out. So not necessarily gonna be your best option, but it is an option. Um, actually taking the saw uh, and getting in behind the pin itself, shoulder into the curtain and getting that saw blade in there behind there and trying to cut the pin is another option. The only thing with that option is, is that sometimes the pin isn't going to come all the way out. And now when you go to raise the ladder, every one of these slats, that pin is going to catch on as you're trying to raise it up and it's going to make you look like a jerk. The fastest and easiest way, at least to my mind, to get through these quickly is with a saw and a P-tool or a saw and the forks of Hallion. So we talked about previously, just to refresh, we're going to cut as close to the lock as possible, either above and below, depending upon how high maybe the lock's up here, right? Either above and below, one cut, all the way through this front face of the angle iron. Now, some guys are like, oh, I got to cut through here and then all the way through the, the channel. No, we're going to be bending right along this edge. So we're going to do one cut across the front face. So one cut as close to the lock as you can and then a, one about six to eight inches above. The reason for that is this you have to have room for the P tool to actually slip in there. Three, or five, five, four, three, four, if you have a halogen handy, say you're the Pac-Man and this is something you're doing or the Pac-Man's nearby, you need to be able to get the tool to the halogen bar in there. So you want to leave enough room for that. You forgot the P tool, so but you got a halogen bar nearby. Yo, bring me the halogen. You can just as easily bend that metal out with this. Quick tip on this, on cutting these. Come in here real close there, Paul. You wanna cut from the edge on back. A lot of times guys will want to bring this all and just rest it up on top. And what that does is it just kind of like dishes out that metal on the surface. You're cutting a lot of surface area at once by cutting across a flat face and it makes your cut super slow. If you cut, from an edge and you work it back incrementally, you're only cutting through this real thin metal. So the cut will actually progress really quickly. So when we're cutting across that flat surface, all we're doing is cutting a little scratch. It doesn't move. You'll be there all day. You look like an asshole. If you go from the edge, it's much faster. That's what we want. Big difference, right?
that's mild steel versus any kind of locking device is going to have this some kind of hardened steel, maybe case hardened steel on the shackle. That's going to be harder to cut through. It's going to take more time. If we're cutting multiple layers, like when we were, when we were coming around with trying to cut the lock through the surround, now you're cutting hardened steel and mild steel and multiple layers, and it just takes time. The track is mild steel. It's quick and easy. Some guys have talked about too, like okay. if the lock is like right here, doing like an angled cut so that there's less surface area on here. But look how much metal we cut. Yeah. Look how much metal we included in our cut, and we're easily able to Super peel it. Super easy out. to peel back. Yeah. Sure. You're not getting. You're not getting much more resistance. No. By... Point of diminishing returns. If it's easier to cut it straight and yeah. take as much as you want, you can yeah. still bend it out of the way. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Right. Guys have all seen the old triangle cut. It's kind of outdated at this point, um, or it's been outmoded because you can do the same job with less cuts faster. Um, so instead of doing that triangle where it's one leg down, leave a little gap, second leg down, all the way to the bottom, long, long cuts, and then connect them and then this folds in. Now we've got a very small opening for guys to actually go in and out of. Remember, this isn't just for egress and access. I'm sorry, this isn't just for access. This is for emergency egress. Like let's say it hits the fan inside and we need to get everybody out as fast as you can. Do you want guys going through a little fucking triangle? No. So. We can accomplish much more than that with a single slash cut. So we're talking about what we call the slash cut. That's where we're going to be cutting the slats. Each one of these is a slat. We're going to be cutting a line straight down the middle of the door, or in some cases, uh, sort of like equally across a large door in multiple cuts. And then we're going to be pulling these sections out. We cut a line down the middle to the point where the two halves of the door that we've created can move past each other. We can pull a slat all the way out. So we're going to accomplish this. We're going to buy full RPM on the saw, bury it in the door. That first initial penetration is going to take the longest because you've got a ton of surface area that you're in contact with. Once you plunge it in, you're only going to be in contact with a teeny little bit of metal at a time, so it'll go pretty quick. Um, we're going to go from as high as we can to about knee height. I say knee height, there's no reason to go all the way down to the bottom of the door. And as you remember, we've got two pieces of angle iron that are shaped like an upside down T at the bottom that'll really jam you up if you're trying to like quickly get through it. It's the very end and you're like, why isn't this cutting? I need to get guys in. Now forget about that. Just go to knee height. Hey guys, quick amendment to the video here. When we were doing this evolution, I was telling my guys to stop their cuts around knee height. Um, the rationale here is I wanted to tell them where to stop because if you don't tell a guy where to stop, a lot of times guys are just going to keep cutting all the way to the bottom of the door and they're going to attempt to cut those pieces of angle iron at the bottom of the door, which they can't really do. And they're going to get hung up there, and just over-focused on cutting that angle iron when it's really not necessary to do so. I think a better way to describe this is to tell guys to stop making their cut about mid-shin, leaving two to three slats on the bottom of the door. Um, but telling guys to, to stop at knee height, I mean, you wind up leaving a fair amount of extra metal on the door, as you'll see we did and it doesn't make sense. Now we can clear those obstacles. It's not, it's not mission critical that we cut all the way down low, but it makes everything easier and safer and better if we cut just a little bit more than what we demonstrate in the video. We're not instructors, we're just firemen. So enjoy the rest of the video. These guys can just, once we get the door open, we can just step over, right? So once we've accomplished our cut, we're gonna pull our slats. That can be done with spiking a Halligan bar into the, into the metal of the slat and pulling out. You can use pliers. You can use the pick of a, of a fire ax. You can use your hands. Don't forget about that. It's another option. Just grab and pull. Um, but let's go ahead and do I'll, do, I'll do the first one. There's one thing I want you guys to keep in mind. As you're cutting, these guards have, I like to call the beak on here. What will happen is you'll be cutting and it'll be going smooth sailing until you get to about waist height, which is when the beak is basically pointed directly at the slats. You'll be full RPM in this door and it's not moving. Sparks have stopped and you're like, why isn't my saw moving down? You're probably hung up on that beak. So keep in mind that. Also, there's another one on the bottom that can get hung depending upon the orientation of your guard, right? So, all right, we'll do the first cut. Let's say your saw isn't working, right? This is a pretty common problem. Flooded start. 
If you, you think your saw might be flooded, decompression button is in. Choke is pushed all the way in, so you're getting full air into the saw. And at the same time, we're gonna squeeze and hold the trigger with our pinky, right? So squeeze that trigger down. So now he's got full throttle, full air. Crank it till it starts, guaranteed start. Also, I don't know if you can hear it, the saw's starting to get bound up. If the saw starts dropping RPM when you're making your cut, the blade is probably getting canted in that cut. So think about backing off or changing the orientation side to side of your saw, because you're probably getting bound. Now some guys will say you should make the spike to pierce first, and then put your tool back in, like take it out. Spike, spike two ahead of time. There's some reasons for that, because the door is more rigid, but to me, it's just as easy to get it in when they're cut, and then you're already buried in the door. So it doesn't matter where in here that you that you spike, just as long as you spike and pull. All right, so now, actually, I'm gonna kind of push the other one in. Hold on. So when I spiked it, it actually pulled a ton of this section forward. You can see it came out of the track. It's not a big deal. But if I'm trying to spike this, try and push this back so I can pull it over, that's a waste of time. Just go over to the other side. I can't swing lefty at all. Now, when this, when this section, these two sections come out, the weight of this door is gonna be like a third of what it was before. All the springs in the drum are gonna wanna carry this thing up so just be aware, when this door is released, it's gonna fling up, make a loud sound, and a bunch of dust is gonna fall out of that drum. It's gonna scare you to death. Just be ready. Now I don't need to re-spike this. I got somewhere to grab over here. Let's see how I can see it somewhere else. Just grab with your hands. And now your guys are in. Then you can step over this. Is it a tripping hazard for egress? Now I can, I can get out, you know? <laughs> but if you wanted to make this cut better, take an extra second, cut a little lower, all the way to the bottom if you like. But now you have the space to do it and the time to do it. This is enough for guys to get in and for ventilation to be affected. Cool, let's go cut another one. There's a the weather tab, which is did, it, did exactly what it's supposed to do. It keeps the door in the track. That's not your fault. It just yeah. is what it is. In fact, when we were exploring this building over here, 
There are some older doors that have these on every, every single one. one. So you're then you can't. Yeah. The last car we're gonna talk about is that barn door style. Basically the objective is to take a giant chunk out of the door and just kind of peel it back like, like the way a barn door opens, right? This is good for regular garage doors, like slab style ones um, that you'd see like on the backs of residences. Um, some of the big industrial places that we have will have these like, like 1920s wooden doors. You can just kind of peel them back in the barn door style. So this this um this is like a four cut job. It's not okay, ideal okay. for a lot of things. But it's good when when nothing when everything else has failed and you just need to take out a giant section of the door without actually just doing one, two, three. Oh, so we'll give you a little bit more. So our first cut is going to be as high up as you can, like about shoulder height. I'm just going to say as high up as you can, but your last cut is going to be sort of in the rack position. You don't want to work over your head. We're gonna start about shoulder height and we're gonna cut all the way down about as far as we can cut. Now, to keep in mind, we've got our upside down T angle line at the bottom. We're gonna, have to, we're gonna have to cut through that. And so the technique I'm gonna show you is a way to cut through that bottom structural member of the door. So like I said, one cut all the way down. Then our second cut is gonna be a triangle cut across the front of the door. And the reason we're gonna do this is we have to give ourselves room for the actual saw to be able to get kind of further in behind the door so we can chop that piece of angle iron, all right? So, because as it is, I've got a circular blade trying to go into a corner and it just doesn't work, right? So we're gonna do our triangle cut, we're gonna stomp that out, and then we're gonna cut that bottom member, those two pieces of angle iron. And our last cut is gonna be saw up on the rack. And we're just gonna cut all the way across from, from our cut all the way over to here. And then when we're done, we should be able to grab this door and just pull it open like a barn door, okay? So we've already used this obviously, so I'm gonna show you the triangle because that's kind of the only weird bit of it. Okay, can I just Slides and video clips for the barn door technique come from Instructor 5 Productions. Train Nelms of National Fire Department put on the video that I saw well over a decade ago and the technique has served me very well ever since. Be up on the rack, coming all the way across, just do a little march, and then you come back to your beginning with a door with your hand. Find the whole thing back. Now, that's about as big as a door you can get. <laughs> 